Hi, my name is Stan. And I've been watching the Black Power community for the last 100 years. I just noticed that you guys have been having some problems figuring out what to do about me. You see, I'm a cracker. Yeah. The white man. The guy that has been running the whole world for the last 2000 years. Well, the reason that I stopped by to speak with you today is to help. I've been watching you guys fight over gaining real black power, and thought I would give you a few pointers. Since we white guys have been running things since we invaded Africa, I figured I would lay out a blueprint to help you achieve your objectives. Might as well use a plan that works, right? Besides, it beats the backward, no progress, mistake repeating methods you people have been trying for the last 400 years. So I knew all of you needed some help. Especially, after Barack Obama got into office. He's a great guy, but a black man in a white man's house ain't really saying much considering all the hell you people have been through. Don't get me wrong. In many ways I know you were happy to get at least one black into office. This is good when you want to run politics, but ruling the world is what we white folks specialize in. Have you ever heard of the Illuminati? Well, that is the kind of coordination you are going to need to begin taking over the world. Okay let's get started. Today, I am going to give you three things that we did to take over the world. You can use these two and begin to gain real black power. Number one. The first step to taking over the world is unity. I know you have heard of this before but black people seem to really struggle with this one. You just don't seem to get it. You would rather fight against each other instead of your enemies. This is bad business and you will never get true freedom doing things this way. Instead, do what we did to gain power. We divided and conquered entire countries based on their differences, while holding true to our similarities. I am white. There is no changing that. My God-born tendency is to preserve my own. Nothing is racist about that. It is just common sense. You people are the stupid ones, going around trying to love everybody, but yourselves. We kicked your asses here in America for over 400 years, and you still go around talking about Jesus loves everyone. While you've been doing all the praying and jumping around, we have been buying up the world and making laws you have to abide by. No offense, but everyone else has unity but you. I mean, look at the business in your neighborhoods. The people that control it, don't even look like you. In fact, everyone who comes to this country sets up a business in the black community. The Koreans, the Indians, the Chinese. The list goes on and on. Aren't you tired of letting these other people supply all of your food, nails, and weaves? The one thing they have that you don't is unity. Number two. Once you get unity, you are going to need to get organized. When we took over the world we had a plan in place. A goal. Since we whites make up a small percentage of the global population, we knew the only way for us to exist was to enslave non-white people. This was our global plan for white supremacy. But we didn't stop there. We organized a military force behind our goal and executed it to perfection. Killing men, women, and children across the globe with brute force. Whatever we needed, we just took it. And if blacks or Native Americans didn't like it, oh well. Remember, there are no rules in war. Our objective is to ensure survival. But you black people seem to think your economic hardships, social injustices, and high arrest rates just happened by chance alone. Never mind, we've worked nearly four centuries, day and night to keep you people exactly where we want you. On the plantation. Yeah. It's true. Let me tell you a little secret. Most white people are not going to tell you this. It's a old family secret we have kept pretty quiet about. And for a good reason. You see, all that free labor my white ancestors got from your black ancestors, translated into a lot of money. In fact, the black slave trade was the greatest wealth building tool in human history. With free labor we were able to finance the industrial revolution. Well, all of that money pretty much stayed in the vast majority of white families. And with all due respect, Whites intend to keep it that way. You see Dr. Martin Luther King was pretty good at integrating lunch counters and toilets, however, 
he didn't do so well at integrating bank accounts, so you blacks were shafted out of the money that was due to you in exchange for a good job and education. But it was us whites who own most of the jobs. Which brings me to my point. It's just another plantation. I say all of that to say, being organized is more than alignment, it is knowing the traps we have laid out for you. And then moving around them. Everybody knows but you blacks. That education will only keep you enslaved. It will only produce what it has already produced. A bunch of dressed up plantation worker is perfectly content, working and serving under another man's vision. You don't really think we are going to teach you to build a nation for yourselves, do you? If you were really educated you would be able to solve your own problems. Problems like gang violence, poor economics and underrepresentation. Instead, you will continue to pass the notion of getting a good job down to your children. This will brainwash them to be just like you. And the cycle will repeat for generations, while we whites continue to run things at the top, your grandchildren will be celebrating the first black Catholic Pope. I know this has been long, so let's move to number three. The third way to gain black power is the most important of all. It is this way because it deals more with your psychology than your conscious mind. When we took over the world we decided to use the most dangerous weapon of all to subjugate the darker peoples of the planet. We used a combination of white supremacy and religion to mindfuck these people into complete submission. If a robber breaks into your house, rapes your family, kills your mother and father, then tells you that in order to go to heaven, you have to worship as God. If someone did that to me, then said that to be born again, I had to worship as God, I'd kill the bastard right on the spot. But you black people seem to have no problem worshipping the God of your enemies. Even worse is that fact that for all the praying that you have done, it seems like the God of the white man is just as racist as we are. Anytime you start believing in the God of your enemy, it pretty much means you're a complete idiot and a pussy who is too far gone to confront his adversary. This is a deep sickness because to believe the man who murdered your family is your friend is to believe that watermelons have gills. This kind of thinking lacks critical reasoning a skill needed to defend territory and the minds of the youth. You even believe that Haiti, the only black nation that ever kicked the white man's ass, is cursed because many of them practice voodoo. You even go further and believe that it was God that hit Haiti with a 7.5 earthquake. Your religious-minded blacks thought this about New Orleans too. Let me tell you the truth. We gave you this God, because we knew by worshipping a white God you would subconsciously be worshipping us. That was a part of our plan, and it worked like a charm on the early slave plantations. We whites decided to perfect it, and have taken our gods all over the world to dark people. You see, we know that if we can get you to put down your god, and pick up ours, you will lose your real power. This is really effective for controlling a people. Practically, by doing this, you will never fight against us because subconsciously you would be fighting god. I know that is a serious mind fuck. But that is why you cheer for a white Jesus to kill all the darkies down in Haiti and New Orleans, while kissing Pat Robertson's ass. Meanwhile our harp machines can shake up more prime real estate for the oil companies. If you continue to follow the god of your enemies, you will never rule the world, because you will always have your allegiance with a white man, instead of your god, who's pissed off because you traded him in for a blunt haired blue-eyed hippie, whose name we took from the Greek god Zeus. So, let's recap. The top three things you need to do to rule the world, and to have black powers. Number one, get some unity. Stop killing each other over nickel bags of weed and coke. You are basically helping to kill off your own army. Stop it and unite. Number two, get organized. There is nothing worse than a bunch of rich rappers talking about Gronkstad and keeping it real when all of them still work for rich white and Jewish men that pimp them for their talent. With Jay-Z, P. Diddy and Oprah, you black people should have your own distribution company by now. Instead of relying on your white backers to put out your albums. This is because you are not organized. This goes for all you sports athletes too. You black sports guys are stupid. You're a grown man and you still have an owner. Stop being a slave and wake up.
When you die all you will have to pass on to your children as a championship ring. When I die, I will have at least two islands and a few manufacturing companies to extend my legacy. For you sports guys, no one will remember you and the money you blew on trying to floss will be right back into our hands. You need to organize and put your money and minds together, for one common goal. Black power. Last but not least, you have to stop following the white man's God. He has really done nothing for you since you started to believe in him. Basically all my God has done for you is allow white guys like me to continue stealing from you. Sure, we'll give you a few rich blacks to make it up the ladder. But this is to keep up hope in you. So that you will teach cowardice and fear to your children and get nothing in return. You will keep praying while we will keep slaying. And taking more land and control of the earth. It will be this way as long as you fall for the lie that some white dude is going to come down from the skies and pull you out of this shit. Stop it. Instead, go back to believing in your God. The God you had when you were rich in Africa and had diamonds, gold, and health. It certainly beats the crap the white man's God has given you. Even if you believed in rocks, you would probably have more luck than what you have gotten with this guy. One last thing. Black people need to stop saying that they're blessed. This is not only dumb, but it lets us white people know that we are still very much in control. If I steal you from your home and throw you into a cardboard box, have you work for 400 years on a plantation, just because I give you a pillow, doesn't mean that you are blessed. It just means, that I gave you a fucking pillow. If a guy cuts off your hand, and then turns around and gives you a bandage, it don't mean anyone blessed you. He just needs his slave to be able to work the next day. So you are not blessed just because the white man gives you a doggy treat. It simply means, you are fucked. So given all the crap you blacks have dealt with here in America, and abroad a new car or money for the light bill are just tools we white folks who are trying to run a plantation do to keep up the morale. So, if going from Africa, a land of milk and honey, diamonds and resources, a place where you had a name and thousands of acres of land, to a place where you are struggling to eat in a one-bedroom apartment every day means you are blessed, then elephants have fit.